Hello lovelies and welcome back to Mama G Gear. It's Mama G here and let's put some sleeves on a sweater. Okay, so this is just, it, it's early in the morning. I'm having my coffee and relaxing. I finished my morning chores. Well, not the laundry, but other stuff. And um, I just wanted to have my coffee relax and work on my sweater. And I thought, why not, you know, pop you on and let you see what I'm doing. Um, this is that two huge granny square sweater that I made, and I'm making a second one. I'm using the Yarnspirations Caron Colorama Halo. Love it. Super soft and really nice to work with, especially after the Red Heart Super. I, I keep, I, I am throwing shade at Red Heart Super Saver. Old school Red Heart Super Saver. The new stuff's good, okay? Just give me a break. All right. Allegedly. Allegedly. Um, and, and actually, it's fine once you, you throw it in the wash, the, the other stuff. Okay, so this is what I was explaining before, if you've seen the other videos, is literally just two big granny squares. The other one I did, I did different rows, different colors. This one, I'm just using the halo in the uh, um, Colorama halo in the Karen cake. And it goes from obviously a deeper green to a lighter green and then it'll go into like a, a, a very very light green and it's two of the same I grabbed two skeins each of these skeins were um it's 71 percent acrylic 18 percent nylon and 11 percent polyester I know you didn't really know that didn't want to know that but the, this colorway is rosemary frost I'm giving you all the information except for what I'm looking for <laughs> it's clarified as a weight five but that's because of the halo okay there's 481 yards in each of those cakes I'm a small to small medium I'm going to say medium only because of my bone structure and I'll probably I'll have some left from both of these I don't think that one well I don't I don't think that one um, would be enough to make a sweater for myself. So just giving you a frame of reference as yardage because I, like I said, I don't know. We're just winging it as usual. Unconventional tutorial. Um, okay, so what I did, I did two two of these. Like I said, the other one was stripes with different colors, changing yarns. I used a seven hook, seven millimeter hook on that. I think that's an L. And on this one, I'm using the continuous ombre and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook which I believe is an eye hook okay that's going to make this obviously uh, a tighter a tighter stitch um, and that lends itself to a, a different look the other one has a lot of big holes in it because it's a, a looser granny stitch so I did two of these and on the first one for myself I did 14 rows or 14 rounds and that served fine for fitting around me because you're going to hold this up to you and you want to make sure that two halves put together are going to make a sweater that's going to fit around you and this one I did more rows obviously because I used a smaller hook smaller stitches I don't know I didn't count them to tell you what they are then you put them right side facing each other so the what's going to be the inside of your sweater is facing out because you're putting the wrong side. That's called the wrong side in case you didn't know because we have some newbies in here. Hello, newbies. And hi, non-yarny peepers, just in case. Um, and then I, I lay it side, side by side and I put a little split. Oh, let's try to get in camera here. I put a little split on the bottom. This is going to be on either side of my hip. I do that because this design is going to lay, it's going to hang past my butt or in that area okay um, because you're putting the, the this whole square is going to go from under your armpit down so to have it fit wide wise for me it's going to be longer on me depending on your body type depends on how it's going to hang so that's how it hangs on me so I opted to leave little slits on both sides you could do one side but it might look like you screwed up so I would definitely do it uh, symmetrically. So I just went up one, there's, there's, there's the corner, then here's one cluster, another cluster, and on this one I went in the middle of that third cluster, 
okay, on both sides, and then just made sure I matched the stitches as I went and single crocheted all the way up to the top, all right? But this is what we're going to do. Now we're going to put it right side out. So, oh my gosh, this yarn is so soft. I recommend the yarn. It wasn't splitty. It, it worked It worked up well, and it's really pretty and very fluffy. All right, so now I've got the top part, and I joined it. On the top, I joined it to the middle of that, the, the, the chain one. I use a chain one in my granny stitches in, in, the, in the corner clusters. So the, the last joining piece I used was in that chain one, just for verification. Some people do chain two, whatever. However you do your granny squares, just, you know, figure out. A, and this is under your armpit, so it's not a huge big deal. Then I'm just going to take my other yarn because I cut that off. And, and we'll tie in as many ends as we can as we go. So what I did on the other sweater, again, larger hook, and I w I'm going to say maybe thicker yarn, um, I crocheted a chain of 45. That fit, that was a perfect sleeve length for me because you're going to measure underneath your arm to your wrist, but you're going to take into account that the sweater is going to hang off of your shoulder a little bit. So you want to, you're better to be shorter and be able to add than too long and then have to cuff or figure something out. So I went 45. It was perfect. This being a tighter stitch, smaller hook, I'm going to do 54 chains. All right. So that's basically what I'm going to do. I got my, uh, that's when I was doing this. I said, let me record this while I'm doing it. So it's my unconventional tutorial. So basically I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to put you on pause, but I'm going to chain 54 and I'm hoping that that's going to land um, perfectly on my arm. And you're chaining in um, multiples of three because you're doing the, the granny stitch. All right. I'm going to put you on pause. Hold on. Okay, I had to uh, eliminate the middle piece of this because of the cute little dog that's in my house that likes to bark at nothing forever. All right, so kind of jumping ahead, but I'm going to explain what I did because I really don't feel like pulling it out and doing it over. So I did the chain of 54, and then here's the join. Okay, now there's what we did and what I explained before, um, and I apologize for getting back in the groove here on the video, is here's the join where we connected the two panels and we connected the two panels on that chain one when you're going to turn in the corner. So that very first chain, or I'm sorry, first um, hole, I went, I went right in from my chain, did a single crochet in there. And then chained two more, which made a my first double crochet for the cluster. You can also slip stitch it in there and then chain three. Doesn't make a difference. Works out the same. I think the chain and then chaining two makes it tighter, but that's how I crochet. Then I did that cluster and worked around with the clusters. Let me get more on camera here, sorry. Um, all the way across. And what's cool about this ombre is is it just blends right in. You don't even see that there's a difference and went across the whole front panel. And now I'm at the other connection. So we'll call this the front panel and the back panel for sake of explanation. And I have some ends that need to be weaved in. All right, so what I, this end was over here. What I did with the end was, because I did this in the other video, was literally take my, my thing out here, my hook out, put this through, pull the end through, put it through the back way and pull the end through so that that's a little bit tucked in so I don't have to do that later. And now I'm going and I pulled it all the way through the next to the next um, corner, corner hole. So we're just going to go into there. And this is at the end of the, like I said, front panel. These shirts could be, you know, back back and forth. You know, they don't have to have a front and back. So now we're at the join. And we can either tuck, tuck these in better if we feel we need to or just cut them off a little bit or leave them as they are or whatever. So now I'm at the other end. And remember we started with the 54 here. Now we're going to chain 54 here. Okay. 
and I'm not going to make you suffer through that, but we're going to chain 54 here, and I will be right back after I do that. And I am back. All right, so I did another chain of 54. And now we're going to go backwards, or we're going to turn our work, basically, and start our granny stitches on this chain. I prefer to, there's no reason why this is unnecessary, but I prefer to go in that back loop just out of habit. So I got one, two, three. So I'm going to go into the third because that's the, that, that is the multiple of three. So we're eliminating uh, the, the end three chains are the first double crochet. Okay, so here's our first cluster. And then we're going to go into the third, two, three, do another cluster. And we're going to continue to do this until we get to, it should work out uh, number wise, it should work out proper. If it doesn't, again, go ahead and fudge it because you're going to be under your armpit and nobody should be looking over there. One, two, three. So now we're going to do another third. So I'm not going to bore you with this. And I'm going to put you on hold and come back to the armpit. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that before. Okay, hold on. And we're back. Okay, so I went and did the clusters all the way down. I haven't counted the clusters, but once I do both sides, I'll count them to make sure they're the same clusters on both sleeve length. And if one is off, I will figure out some way to fudge one or the other, all right? So now we're we're back to the sweater part. Here's our cluster, and we're not going to go to the other side of the sweater. I'm going to go back on the front side, the front, front side of the sweater where we just went across, okay? So did I get this? I think I got this twisted. Hold on. I did. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. I... I twisted it because I did something something I had to get up and then I came back and sat down and it was twisted but these are the things that happen all right so now we're back here we are so it's one two three and that would work out perfectly for my cluster so I'm going to do my cluster right here one two three and this will all come together because when you do the other side you're going to join it right here. So it'll, it works, folks. It really works. So here's our other cluster. So that's the sleeve. Looks long, but I'm sure when I put it on, it'll be perfect. All right, now we're here's our beginning. And I'm going to just go. This is the first row that we started with, right? So now I'm going to go and just start going across, whoops, hopefully. Start my clusters, the grannies, and work myself across. Like I said, we're gonna do exactly the same on the other side, but we don't have to worry about chaining. We're just gonna keep working it through what we've already done. Is that three? Okay, on to the next. So I need to really practice doing these, you know, crocheting farther away and not being able to see what you do. Crochet away from you with one eye closed. All right, so I'm going to work my way across. And now I'm on the inside, by the way, just so you know, you're going to be inside the right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side as you pivot across. And then I'm going to meet you back to the other side where we had our first chain. So hold on. Alrighty, welcome back. I am at the other end, the other join, and I have one more double to put in this cluster. And now we're now we are we're that last cluster in our chain. So I'm gonna here's the cluster and here's that first chain. And that's where I'm going to do the first cluster. And I'm not worried about the back loop, front loop here, because it really doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference when you're counting, but 
I'd like to do the opposite on this side, but that's just because the OCD. Getting that first one's going to be tough. Because I can't see it. There we go. All right, so that's the first stitch of the um, chain. And that's where the first cluster is going to go. And then we're going to skip three. One, two, three. And do the next cluster. And I'm going through the two and leaving the hump. It, you don't have to worry about that. It's just me being weird. You got to feed the OCD sometimes. You got to feed it. And then we're going to go to three more. So there's one, two, and here's the third. All right, so you get the gist of what I'm doing. And I'm going to work my way down. And so I'm going to put you on hold and do this a little more comfortably next to me. Yeah, so you just continue that. So when we're, when we're going to do the other side, and I may or may not film that because you may or may not need that, when we're doing the front panel, we're really just going to start our granny on the tip of the sleeve, which is here, and then work our way, go back to the armpit, and go to the other, so other panel. That's literally all it is. And then back and forth till you go all the way up to the height that you need. So one, two, three. It's really a fun. I want to say this. You know, I'm I'm doing other things, obviously, but in three days of just kind of putzing around on this, I'll be able to. Today's the third day, and I'm just doing this, having my coffee. And I will have the sweater done today, and I have a lot of other things to do, so not a problem. And what's cool is you can make this any size, kids to kids to, a, to grown men. In fact, I had two males, not to be gender bending here, or whatever you call it, allegedly, um, but two guys actually the when I wore the other sweater out the other day I had two two fellas that not only said they liked the sweater they also said that you a guy would wear it you know not as maybe the the color scheme that I chose but it, it is uh you know unisexed and everybody's doing the crochet now my god I love the fact that I see even commercials on TV there's older gentlemen wearing granny there's a commercial for uh, insurance company or something there's an older elderly gentleman dancing around and he's wearing a granny uh, square pullover short sleeve shirt I, I'm I, I'm just so thrilled to see that it's such a great thing well, anyway I'm gonna put you on hold stop jabbering I might keep jabbering but you don't have to hear it and I'll meet you at the end of the sleeve and then we'll show you how to do that and I'm back again. Okay, so I'm almost I'm almost at the end, and I was having a little problem figuring out the third stitch, which there again don't have to be perfect. Okay, um, and so then now I counted. Now on the other side that we did, there's 18 clusters, right? And that cluster goes to, to here. Once it's attached to the sweater, I didn't count it. The ones that were unattached to the sweater. And I have 18. And I do think the granny stitch alternates. Yes, it does. So I could do 17 on this side, and it still would be okay. Right? Because you're going to add the other side. All right, so here we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16. And we have that many left. One. All right, so 16, and I said I could do 17 on this, and it would be all right if I did an extra chain. So let's go. We're going to go to this one here. No, let's go right to the end. All right, so I have more than three here. That's okay. Like I said, just fudge it. It's not going to be, you know, these little things, we see them, but no one else sees them. All right, so there's 17 on the other side has 18, but it's going to alternate. So now, wait a minute. Okay, let's think. Wait a minute, because I want to, that's going to eliminate one. I want to add one over here. All right, never mind. I'm going to pull this out. All right. 
and then I'm going to do the cluster in the one before the last one, okay? Which looks like here, which I don't care. This is good enough. All right, so we're going to put our cluster here. So that's going to be 17 clusters, but we want to add one to the other row. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense. Sometimes things make sense to me, and they don't make sense to other people, but... Um, because, you know, you go in between the stitches, so the rows are going to be, you know, it's not going to be even on either side. All right, so now we've got the one stitch. So now I'm going to do this last stitch, though this is going to not, this is not going to be a cluster, but it is going to be a cluster. So now I'm chaining three, turning my work, and then going right back into that gap that's in between here. That's my second double crochet, third double crochet, hopefully. And then going to continue going back across the, the front because we, we've designated this as the front for argument's sake. And I'm going to go all the way across to the other sleeve and continue up until I get enough to where it's going to fit across the top of my shoulder so I could join it together and then just have a slit for the neck. There are ways you could, if you wanted more of a square neck and you didn't want the, the slit neck because it, uh, you know, it's going to lean up against your throat and it might be un feel uncomfortable or maybe you don't like that look. There is a way where you can go, you can measure out what your neck's going to be, bring your granny to that point and then turn it and go the other way and connect it to the other panel and do the same on the other side. And then you'd have a rectangle opening on the top. Um, I don't know how better to explain that. If you want me to show a video on that, I could do that at some point. But basically that's all this is and I'm not gonna bore you with the rest. So when, when I come back with the other yarn, just to show you here, hold on. When I come back with the other yarn, I'm literally got my other skein. I usually put my pretzel, slip stitch, and here's the under part. This is the chain part, sorry, chain part. And I'm going to, here's the bottom cluster. And I'm literally, I could literally just start it right here, two, three, Oops. Cluster two and three. Then work my way down to the next. So I'm really developing this on the other on the chain. I'm pulling this through the chain. Alright, and that and then this is gonna take me to the two panel join. And then I'm just going to continue doing the grannies on the opposite side, on the opposite panel, and work it up to the same height as the um, as the other side. That's literally it. And then join them together. Then fold it in half. Then you fold it in half and measure like how far you need your for your opening for your head, and then um, join it. You know, go from the outside sleeve in or whatever, so that they're even. And then you could be finished there, or you could just do a design around the opening. If you want like a mock neck or whatever, you want to make a cowl neck, whatever you want to do for the neck, you just could do it there. So that's it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to finish this, finish my coffee, let the animals in because I put uh, Scruffy outside because she was barking and that's what was ruining my video. So I threw her little furry butt outside. She don't mind it because it's nice out and she's laying sunbathing on the porch. All right. Love you guys. Be well. Uh, have a olicious, yarn-olicious day. And yeah, happy granny stitching. Bye-bye for now.